and that's the it's healing. It's a saw Sudan, the man supreme peace. Wishing you and yours everything you seek. Now let me get to the rhyme. Every line is divine, giving sight to the blind, living life in the grind until. Trayon, any statement you want to make? Trayon White was surrounded by supporters as he left the federal courthouse this afternoon. The Ward 8 council member said nothing as he was quickly ushered into the back of a car which then sped away. Inside the packed courtroom on the second floor, White put his hands together in prayer and thumped his chest as he acknowledged to porters. He said little other than to confirm his age and that he knew the seriousness of the charges against him, a possible sentence of 15 years in prison if convicted. In the 37-page criminal complaint, the FBI lays out a series of conversations a cooperating witness recorded having with the Ward 8 council member since June. Prosecutors say all of the conversations were recorded in a car, wired for video and sound. According to the documents, in one conversation, with what the FBI calls a confidential human source, the source handed White an envelope with $5,000. That's for making sure you reach out to government employee 3 and government employee 4. White then says, I'm on top of all of that. You know me. I'm already moving. Once you and I lock eyes and gets to an understanding, I gets to work. I can make some expletive happen. The complaint includes photos of White allegedly taking the cash payments, which according to the FBI broke down like this. June 26th, $15,000. July 17th, $5,000. July 25th, $10,000. And August 9th, $5,000. Trayon White was arrested yesterday afternoon outside an apartment building in Southeast. This photo a neighbor shared with News 4 shows FBI agents in tactical gear next to a car White was driving. A Tesla with Ward 8 council member plates was parked outside. The FBI in its complaint states White agreed to accept $156,000 in undisclosed kickbacks and agreed to 3% payment of contract values. $35,000 in cash payments. White's attorney, Fred Cook, had no comment as he left the courthouse. The Ward 8 council member is due back in court September 19th. Okay, so we have the unfortunate news about Trayon White. Let's jump into it. I ran the video to bring everybody up to snuff, but if it somehow got past you, Trayon White is being charged with bribery and the people came to get him. So let's get into it. Now, first things first, I'm from Ward 8. Right. I grew up on Pomeroy Road, up the street uh, from Wellington Park, down the street from Staten Oaks. In fact, look, we could walk through the woods and get to Staten Oaks. Right. We could walk through the woods. Wellington Park, too. But it was a longer stretch. But look. Uh, when I was there, Marion Burry was the man. Right. I no longer live there, but my mom still lives in the area. And I still know people that live in the area. Right. So I just wanted to give you a little insight as to where I'm coming from, where I'm coming from. Now, when it comes to Trayon White, um, I think sometimes man, we we put unfair expectations when we see somebody with a light or some potential or we see them moving up or doing things. We, we put an unfair expectation um, on some of these people. Um, because there's no perfect person in the world. We all we all know this, right? There's no perfect people in the world. world. And Trayon, you know, Trayon White is no different. Marion Burry was the same. He wasn't perfect, right? But I think in the case of Trayon White, what we should try to do, or, or what I would encourage people to do, is let's see if his good outweighs his bad. Let's see if his good outweighs his bad. Now. I know that it involved uh, some of the bribes. They said uh, in total, he was expected to take over $100,000 in bribes, right? Whoa, right? And I don't like to use white people as the standard at all, but I mean, you want me to get excited about this $100,000 that he was supposed to eventually take, you know? But you have people like Tom Dasher who owed over $100,000 in taxes. Right. Tom Dashu. I don't know if you guys remember that, but Tom Dashu and I'll probably put the pickup in this. But yeah, you know, so I'm not going to get super excited about that. And they allowed him to pay it. No jail time, no nothing. Right. So I'm just saying that to say, hey. Trayon White is not perfect, but what I want to do is I want to go over a few of the bills that he was that he uh, was in favor of. 
and that he voted yeah for, right? He voted yes to. Um, two things I know he did. One was he stood strong when they were giving out the jabs. He stood strong against uh, forcing kids to be uh, get jabbed or, or putting out the mandate that kids be jabbed in order to go to school. He stood against that, right? He stood against uh, kids getting uh, the jab uh, against their parents' will, right? They wanted to give the kids the jab against their parents' will. He stood against that, right? But what we want to do now is, or what I'm going to do now is, I want to go over a few of these bills that he was he, he was in favor of, right? Or he helped sponsor, right? I want to go over some of these so that we can get an idea and we're not just out here, like I've seen on some of these channels, People are being very irresponsible about how they're 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 uh, talking about this situation. Right. So let's go over a few of the bills. OK, so let's take a look at this. We have the cost free coverage for prostate cancer screening amendment act of 2023. Now, Trayon was in favor of this. Um, this was a bill to amend the prostate cancer screening insurance coverage requirement act of 2002 to provide cost free coverage of prostate specific antigen tests and digital rectal exams per year and prohibit any health insurer from imposing a deductible co-insurance co-payment or other cost sharing requirements for prostate cancer screening so i would i would say yes that's a good thing right that's a good thing okay we have the safe and supported pregnancy and delivery for incarcerated individuals amendment act of 2024 now trayon is in favor of this what is this this is an act to create a Department of Corrections in the District of Columbia to improve the resources and supports available to incarcerated individuals who are pregnant and in the custody of the Department of Corrections. That's a good thing. He wants to get the people, you know, regardless of the mistakes people make or the bad decisions, it's not the child's fault, right? So you want to get the, the you want to get the proper available resources that these people need. To, to um have a healthy baby or have healthy pregnancy. Okay. Okay, so we have the Do Right by DC Tenants Amendments Act of 2023. Trayon was in favor of this. What does this do? This was a bill to amend section 47 2851.11 of the District of Columbia Official Code to authorize the Department of Licensing and Consumer Protection to deny new basic business licenses and building permits to rental property owners who neglect their properties. So what they're doing is like making sure that uh, people don't have to live in horrible conditions. This is a good thing. If you don't take care of your property properly, we're not going to give you a license. All right, let's move on. Okay, we have a truancy reduction for student success act of 2024. Now, Trayon is in favor of this. What's this about? Okay, so this is to require the Office of the State Superintendent of Education to publish monthly data on absenteeism on his website. So basically, we want to know what these kids are doing and we want it easily accessible. That's a good thing. Okay, so we have the Department of Parks and Recreation Hours Expansion Amendment Act of 2023. Trayon was in favor of this, right? Now, what is this about? This is uh, This bill was to expand the regular operating hours of all facilities managed and operated by the Department of Parks and Recreation. So, hey, look, we can't argue with um, expanding the hours of the recreation facilities because we know, kids, we know that that is needed. So... Y'all know what's coming. This is a good thing. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the Youth Mentorship Through Community Engagement Act of 2024, and we have the Vocational Education for a New Generation Act of 2024. So let's start with the Youth Mentorship Through Community Engagement Act of 2024. What do we have? So what was that bill about? That was to establish a professional youth mentorship and family engagement program to enhance well-being and teach essential life skills and to create community service leave for eligible eligible district government employees to volunteer as a tutor or mentor to a student. So in that we have, you know, they wanted to uh, create a situation where people that are doing positive things can come back and mentor the youth, right? 
show them some essential life skills and stuff like that. Yes, that's a good thing. Now, let's go with the Vocational Education for a New Generation Act of 2024. And this bill was to establish a workforce-ready program that is locally funded and administered at, uh, administered by the Office of the State Superintendent of Education. So, you know, you can't be angry with any type of vocational situation where people can get skills to move on and be able to um, support themselves in this society. So, yes, both of these Y'all know what it is. Are a good thing. <laughs> okay, we have the Conflict Resolution Education Amendment Act of 2023. Again, Trayon's on the right side of things, right? He was in favor of this, right? What was this for? This was to require the Office of the State Superintendent of Education to develop a model curriculum to develop students' conflict resolution skills in accordance with the health education standards. It was to require local education agencies to adopt for each academic level the model curriculum or an alternative conflict resolution education program. What else? And to require the District of Columbia Public Schools to receive input from local school advisory teams on the adequacy of the resources for conflict resolution education at each school. So in the climate we live in with the kids acting out the way that they're acting out, you have to be in favor of conflict uh, resolution. So yeah, this was a this was a good thing for sure. Okay, Trey Young's on the right side of this. You have the Ensuring Safe Forensic Evidence Handling for Sexual Assault Survivors Amendments Act of 2023. You know, that's basically ensuring safe forensic evidence handling for sexual assault survivors. I know ladies can get with this. I know ladies can get with this, although men are assaulted too. But again, here we have Trayon on the right side of things. Okay. So here we have the Ski Bands Prohibition Act of 2023. Again, Trayon was in favor of this. What was this to do? This was to prohibit the wearing of ski masks on property owned or controlled by the district and to prohibit the wearing of ski masks on private property without the consent of the owner. So this is safety stuff. I, I'm in favor of this. I don't like to see people walking around with these ski masks that cover their whole face because, I mean, we, we understand what it is. We understand what it is. But again, Trayon's moving correctly. Let's keep it moving. All right, we have the Safe Schools and Students Amendments Act of 2023. All right, Trayon was on the right side. All right, what was this bill to do? This was to amend the School Safety and Security Contracting Procedures Act of 2004 to repeal the dissolution of the Metropolitan Police Department's School Safety Division. So they were trying to dissolve that. He said, no, we need that. We need that security in the schools. I mean, can we argue this? Do we need to argue this? All right, let's motivate this thing forward. All right, yet again, we have Trayon on the right side of things. Now, here we have the Senior Citizen Real Property Tax Relief Amendment Act of 2023. Now, what was this bill for? This bill was to amend Section 47-863 of the District of Columbia Official Code to provide additional real property tax relief for lower-income district seniors and to eliminate the tax notch that currently exists when a household's adjusted gross income reaches $128,950 by phasing out the deduction up to $180,000. So again, man, this man is on the right side of things. Okay, so here we have the Gun Violence Awareness Month Recognition Resolution of 2024 and the Caribbean Heritage Month Recognition Ceremonial Resolution of 2024. So on the gun violence, right, what was that bill about? That was to recognize the month of June 2024 as Gun Violence Awareness Month in the District of Columbia. I would say that's a good thing. Uh, then with the Caribbean Heritage Month, what was that bill, what, that bill for? That bill was to celebrate the achievements, contributions, and diversity of Caribbean communities and declare June 2024 as Caribbean Heritage Month in the District of Columbia. Hey man, that's, you know, now he's recognizing, he's recognizing others as well. That's a good thing. Okay. So we have the Science Teachers Matter Day recognition resolution of 2024. All right. Now what's that about? 
Well, that's to celebrate the achievements of the District of Columbia scientists, recognize advancements in medical and technological fields, honor teachers who inspire the next generation of scientists, and declare February 28th, 2024 as Science Teachers Matter Day in the District of Columbia. Now, we all know how important that is. Right. We always talking about how teachers don't get recognized enough, how they they pay ball players more than they pay teachers. Right. So, again, my man is on the right side of this thing. All right. So we have the Black History Month recognition resolution of 2024. And this is to celebrate the legacy, achievements and contributions of African-Americans in the District of Columbia to recognize the important role African-Americans played in American history and to and to celebrate february is black history month so that's already in so of course you know i'm in favor of that you know and uh anybody black should be in favor of that all right let's move on okay so here we have the dc black pride recognition resolution of 2023 now what was this about this was to recognize the history and the importance of dc black pride it was to celebrate the efforts of the center for black equity and to welcome visitors from the greater Washington region, across the country, and around the world to the festivities. So it was an all-inclusive thing in, help, in, in celebrating Black Pride, right? He's on the right side of that. Nothing to see here. All right, we're not going to go over every single one of them. But you guys get my point, right? Which is his good outweighs his bad. And I think we should consider that when you know when we're assessing these these narratives that start to come out or the picture that they're trying to paint on these uh these media stations okay just to be clear i'm not saying that Treyon white shouldn't be held accountable for his actions right that's the only way we learn is to be held accountable for our actions right but what i don't want to do is i don't think we should characterize Treyon white off of this one decision Right. I don't think we should characterize him that way. Um, I think he's done more good than bad. Um, again, I think they should find another way to punish him. Like you, you can find another way to punish him. I don't think he should do any jail time. Definitely not anywhere close to any 15 years or anything like that. I think what you do is you find a way um, to punish him. That's fair. Right. And then I think the man should be allowed to make a comeback. And um, get back to what he was doing, which is helping the people. The majority of that was helping the people. Yes, he made a bad decision, but he was a man about helping the people. So I think he should be able to get back to that. Um, Y'all stick together. Help one another route. I'm out. To the blind, living life in the grind until I'm no longer. My speech just keeps getting stronger and stronger. Uplifting the weak from the grip of police or the clip of the ops. The kangaroo court that'll lie you in a box till you're lying in a box. Will you see grow to be a lion in a fox? That's valiant and smart. Or will he follow you?